YouTube and I am a tutor and uh, director at London Garnish um, Music Production School and um, today I'm going to be taking you through a few things to do with uh, recording um, and essentially what we're looking at today is you know some of the things that we have to think about when we're recording um, including you know what source are we recording and why are we recording that source and how would we record that source some of the settings some of the recording modes um, recording itself is is really simple it's just a case of pressing a button um, and you know that's uh, that's all that you do um, and then you press another button to stop um, or press another key to stop should I say so <laughs> we're going to kind of get into it for some of you people who might who might be new to logic um you know so most of this information is going to work for you some for some of you who are a little bit more seasoned uh, there might be things that in there that you can pick up and uh, and and work with um so yeah without much further ado uh, let's uh, let's get to it so when you're recording in Logic and you're recording MIDI information for software instruments and so on and so forth, um, it's pretty simple to begin your recording process because all you need to do is press the, the letter R, which is the default in your, in your key commands in Logic. Um, and you essentially get a count in, you will get a click, and you will be ready to go so you can just record straight away um when you are working with other sources you're going to want to think about how to get those sources in in the first place um, and those would be what we would call audio sources so i have one audio source today and like i've got two essentially two software instrument sources i've got um some drums here um just using drum machine designer again once again in these sessions i'm i'm trying not to use too many things that aren't in logic um i've got um a bass synth here and um, i've got just logic stock yamaha piano to work with um and so the only audio source that i'm working with today is this is this bass synth essentially um which is uh, which is going to provide the bass line um for my song which i haven't figured out you know anything about that just yet we're just gonna you know freestyle and uh, hopefully come out with something that's okay um so you might want to obviously one of the big things that people want to record whether that's for um sung wrapped or spoken is vocals for which you would need a microphone which i have here um, i won't be recording my today vocals today unfortunately so everyone that got excited about that can uh, just get unexcited <laughs> um so the vocals um would you'd need a microphone um guitars and basses and stuff like that if you have an amplifier you would need a microphone as well um but um if you don't you can plug straight in to your audio interface um, and you can just go that way um, and other sources like uh, synthesizers I'm, I'm plugged that straight in um, I might want to record um, like if you remember last last um, session that I did a couple of weeks ago I was saying I might want to record um, my turntables which are behind uh, the camera there um, and I would need, obviously, uh, to plug them in as an audio source as well. There are other sources you can record and, you know, whatever. It kind of just depends on what you're doing. But, like, obviously, in the in the studio, you would imagine them to be instruments. Um, vocals are also classed as an instrument, by the way. Um, so <laughs> all of those instruments would need recording um, via audio. Obviously, with software instruments, it's different. You don't need to connect anything apart from your keyboard, and you can just get moving and, and do your thing um, with those. So I have connected that, and obviously one of the things that I would say of, that I haven't said is that if you have a source that you're trying to record, which is an audio source, uh, like any of the ones that we spoke about, 
um, you're going to want to have an audio interface. So I, obviously I have an audio interface here, um, which I've plugged my bass synth into um, directly. So that kind of covers, um, you know, all of that. One of the things that we, uh, one of the things that we would probably go a little bit further into um, in courses and so on and so forth would be um, recording with microphones, what types of microphones, what you need for those microphones. So um, a dynamic microphone, for instance, is quite a common and, and cheap microphone. It doesn't mean that it sounds bad, um, but it's a common and cheap um, make of microphone, which you can... Um, plug straight into your DAW and you turn up your gain and you're good to go. Um, with other sources, um, like um, a microphone which is a condenser microphone, you would need to have 48 volts phantom power. And then, you know, obviously you get into the subcategory of, you know, what's a great microphone and so on and so forth. And, you know, we, we, we talk about all of that kind of stuff. And it's not only my students that I would talk to um, about that. It's basically anyone who's willing to listen. So um, I apologize to all my friends for talking to them about, about microphones when they don't really care. Um, so yeah, we would have, you know, all of that kind of stuff going further into sound engineering and, and all of that, which is not really a topic that I'm going to touch on today. Really, what we're trying to do today is kind of go, right, if I wanted to approach recording and I was at home with my laptop on Logic and I've got my bits and pieces, audio interface, microphone, all the cables I need for my instruments and my instruments themselves, what are some of the things that I need to be thinking about and looking at? Well, um, when you work in Logic, one of the things that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're set correctly um, with all of your settings. Um, and these are your audio settings. So if you go to uh, the screen here, Logic uh, Pro X Preferences, and you go to Audio, this is your main audio window for your settings. And here is where you would determine I'd say like there's really three things to focus on here. Um, what's your input device, which is in the middle there? What's your output device and what is your buffer size? And I'll come to buffer size in a minute. But your input and output device should always be your audio interface. I know they're not in mine. Well, my um, my um, input device is, but my output device isn't. Don't worry about that because... Um, because this is only just to plug the audio into you guys whilst I'm streaming. But usually that would be the same as that, right? So, you know, there's many companies that make audio interfaces, um, M-Audio and Focusrite and, you know, Native Instruments, all of those companies. So whatever you, the name of your audio interfaces should show up here in order that when you've plugged your um, microphone or instrument cable in, um, it's basically receiving the signal. Um Buffer size is something that you want to get familiar with. Now, um, buffer size is all to do with latency, and latency is just a way of saying audio delay, okay? So when we are working with um, recording instruments, what we want to do is we want to make sure that our buffer size is set as low as we can get it on our computer without our computer choking, okay? Now, obviously, everything will depend on how how much of your CPU resources you are using and all of that kind of stuff. But um, I tend to find 128 is okay. And if I can get down to 64, as long as I'm not running a really heavy session with loads of software instruments and, you know, all of that kind of stuff, then I would prefer that for audio. Most of the time, actually, when I'm working with audio and, you know, let's say I've taken a production um, into the stage where I need to record maybe a vocalist or guitarist or whoever... Um, I will be actually um, trying to bring this down as much as I can, but I will actually be working with a bounce of the audio instruments, as it, as, as it were. So it kind of helps you to free up resources of CPU and stuff like that. So I'd usually be working like down there. Um, and without getting too technical, like you can, you can like certain audio interfaces allow you to monitor live without any latency. Mine certainly does. Um, so, without getting too technical, like um, that, that is always an option if you are, you know, running out of, um, you know, CPU or you you find you can't get your buffer size down really low. Actually, when I'm mixing and stuff like that, 
um, I can I can turn my buffer size up because the latency at that point doesn't matter because as soon as I press play, I'm going to hear everything back together. So um, those are the things that you want to think about there. And uh, if you go into the general tab, um, usually you will be um, presented with information that you don't really need to see that much. Um, and generally, you, what, what, whatever is set is correct um, as it comes out. Um, sometimes um, I will have this ticked, input monitoring for only the focus tracks, but we'll talk about what input monitoring is anyway. Um, and, um, and this ticked as well, independent monitoring level for record enabled channel strips, um, which is another, just a setting that I turn on and off just depending on what I'm doing. Um, and is not really anything to worry about too, too much. Um, the rest of these tabs, you don't really need to worry about, um, unless you're, you know, experiencing big pro problems with like sampler or, uh, you want to change editing things, um, input output assignments file editor mp3 you don't really need to worry about that much um recording here is something that we'll come back to but um the uh automatically you will have what we call 24 bit recording which is usually um the the best bit depth that we can get um at this current point in time um and the recording file type uh, which you can switch between AIFF and WAV uh, if you wish to do so However, I just leave it at what it is um, at that point. We'll be looking at some of this stuff later on. Um, when you come here, you can also go to record recording project settings, which is where you can um, adjust the counting amount and you know allow tempo change recording. And if you're doing takes, you can colorize your takes and all of this kind of stuff. Um, and then obviously, if you click back there to recording preferences, you're back where you were before. So when you're working um, in recording, one of the things that you'd probably want to do um, is probably want to work uh, with um, this area of your control bar here, which is known as the transport area. Um, and as you hover over certain things, you can see, you know, there's a little like letter next to the record button, which is R and next to the cycle button, which is C. Um, and they are the shortcuts. Um, so play is, uh, that's the spacebar symbol and stop is, well, I've got a numerical pad, it's zero, but it can also be um, spacebar. Um, and forward and backwards and all of that kind of stuff, forward and rewind, I should say. Now, one thing I like to see um, uh, when I when I start up my templates and stuff like that is um, an, another button, which is which is a great button, um, if you right click on your um, control bar and you go to customize control bar and display, um, if you go to transport and you just go to this button here, capture recording, this is a good one to help you out. Um, and I'll show you what that does um, in a little while. Um, and you see this little record button um, appears there with a circle around it, which is going to be somewhat of a lifesaver. Um, at some point for you probably um, so make sure you have that and um, you know this you can save this as like your default template so you know if your name is um, Jimmy Jam one of my favorite producers um, you can save it as Jimmy Jam um, recording template or just Jimmy Jam logic template so this always loads up um, and just go to file save as template and you'll follow the instructions for that so that's the transport area and on the on the right of the screen um, or on the right of this uh, middle bit which is the LCD uh, display uh, you can see I have a couple of things here like uh, one of these is a recording mode called replace which we'll look at um, and I have this tuner here and this solo button and stuff like that and then I have my um, count in um, and my metronome or click as it's referred to as well. I'm going to right click again here, customize control bar and display. Um, and I'm going to just bring in a couple of things that we will hopefully look at today, like auto punch um, and low latency mode uh, is uh, another one to have um, to hand. And I think that would be, yeah, that, that would be it for me to add um, for today's session. <laughs> 